Well, howdy, everybody. It's another beautiful day in paradise. Um, I'm cleaning my house after uh, guests have left today, which has been pretty fun, getting to have my family here for a little bit. And uh, I am now expecting almost 30 inches of snow, which is really exciting because I missed the last storm that came through here uh, during the Rio Green Conference, which was last week. Uh, good times had by all. I imagine that by now many of you who uh, follow along with uh, Matt Martin or uh, with Alan Hain, uh, who are down there with me, um, or who are checking out the new uh, Next DIY Lawn channel with Paul Castleberry, um, you've, you've seen some good highlights of that. I didn't really take much uh, film while I was down there. Everybody else was kind of doing that. And, um, you know, you, if you were following along, you saw the couple live uh, things that I did. And that was about all I could really handle with all the speaking that was going on. Um, well, here's what I wanted to talk about today. It's uh, <sighs> warming up in the South. Uh, I've been on the phone a lot uh, the last few days. Uh, will continue to be for the next couple of weeks with people basically from the transition zone down south uh, gearing up for their first applications of fertilizer um, as well as their pre-emergent applications that are going on. And so I really wanted to make this primarily about weeds and we're going to talk about this for the next few weeks um, leading up into Loncology that's happening now in four weeks, basically five weeks from today. Um, where we're really going to dig into weeds and the uh, symptoms of what that might mean. Their, their role in your soil and lawn health uh, and what they're telling you. So uh, today I wanted to kind of start on an overview of that and then we're going to dig deeper uh, as we go through the next few weeks leading into those pre-emergent times and applications. So um, let's talk about the needs first and foremost, you know, if you are running a fairly standardized lawn care program, uh, meaning not doing a lot to focus on the soil, um, your time is mainly consisting of, of just feeding, just doing the NPK program um, and not going much deeper than that. Your soils without a doubt are going to have issues. Um, Typically when that happens, weeds are more present. So again, one thing you hear people say in the lawn community is a healthy lawn has less weeds. The healthier, the thicker you can make a lawn, the less weeds you will have just basically by crowding them out is essentially how that works. And so that's true. That's very much true. And there's more to it than that. Yes, the thicker you can get a lawn, the better, but what does it take to get that lawn super thick? What what kind of soil is needed to get you there? Uh, what sort of nutrients are present in order to get you there? Um, what are those other factors that really create that dense canopy of turf that prevent weeds from forming? Well, generally, in general, there's a few reasons why you would get weeds, okay? Open, bare spots. Bare spots in your lawn are the first place weeds are going to grow. Uh, and that really doesn't matter what grass type you have. Um, it makes no difference. If you've got um, Bermuda that needs to crawl across, St. Augustine that needs to crawl, Zoysia, uh, or you know Fescue, which just gets bigger clumps, it doesn't really make a difference. If you've got a bare spot, a weed is going to go there first and foremost. And... The reason is the soil has to correct because it's been exposed. It's got um, too much heat on the surface. Uh, it's, it's hemorrhaging carbon um, and everything is going to the atmosphere. So weeds will come into place to help replenish that. And depending on the type of weed, whether it's a shallow root system, uh, a broad spreading plant, um, you, you have these different types of weeds that will grow in for different reasons. So using diagnostic tools as here's the type of weed I'm seeing, what does that mean? So oftentimes if you're dealing with things like dandelions or, or different grasses, grasses, weedy grasses that we call, classify as weeds are going to have deep, dense roots that are driving far down into the soil. 
and bringing minerals up that are down deep, that are locked, that are actually not available on the plant surface because roots of your turf grass is not going down to it. So there's a depletion of a topsoil layer uh, or minerals in the top zone of your three to six inches that these grasses pull from the depths of the soil to replenish in those zones. And then when they die, they leave behind these vast root zones that become uh, pathways for water, uh, food for earthworms, oxygen. It dies and leaves behind a much greater contribution than just seeing that unsightly Johnson grass or Dallas grass or whatever might be popping up in the area. So when you see those types of grasses, when you see weedy grasses starting to show up, generally you're dealing with something that's compacted around the surface and that you've got a mineralization problem in your topsoil and there's nutrients that need to be replaced. Um, oftentimes there's a calcium deficiency. That's something that you see with dandelions. Dandelions drive down deep into heavy compacted soil tend to bring up calcium and are helping with phosphorus. So you could have a phos deficiency and a calcium deficiency. And honestly, many of the weeds that you deal with commonly are because of the unavailable calcium uh, and not putting that in as a regular piece of your program. Now, there are many that come along with pH imbalances. pH imbalances on a higher low end of the spectrum, certain weedy types will come into those areas. Uh, low organic matter. Um, I was speaking with Matt Martin earlier today. We were pulling up and looking at some different weeds and um, kind of citing uh, instances to where problems happen. And uh, I brought up our field in Georgia that's outside of our plant. Now, that field uh, is, is a fill zone. And uh, when our building, our, our plant was built in the early 70s, uh, the hill was kind of scraped down and a lot of subsoil was moved to create another pad, a sort of a foundational pad uh, for a twin building to the one that I have currently. So uh, everything to the west side of my building is set up to have another building built. So we're talking about fill dirt, clay, rock, just kind of a bunch of different crap in there. And what grows are significant amount of weeds. Over the years, we've managed to get more and more grass growing um, without seeding or doing anything like that, but just by caring for the areas. But we have certain spots where at times we will take our uh, humic sludge from our production and go out into that field and we will flood out certain areas of the field, especially in low spots. And one of the biggest weed problems we had in there was wild onion, it was everywhere. Um, that's kind of an interesting one. And you see it around Georgia, uh, you know, in certain soil conditions, but this is typically what that's going to mean. Compacted soil, anaerobic soil, low organic matter soil, a very depleted soil system. That's why that's there. So when we don't have aerobic bacteria working, we don't have organic matter to work with, we get plants that are going to put more bulb, more sort of carbohydrate rich bulbs down into the soil, which become soil food. And that's an indication right there that we've got a compaction issue, um, that, that the microbial activity is not working because there's no real food for it, and we need to correct that particular problem, okay? So, what we have done down there with flooding this uh, humic out in certain places, the weeds have gone. They're just gone. And then not only have they gone, grasses have pulled back in there. Now, not just any grass, it's common Bermuda. Okay, so common Bermuda has taken over down there and it was not present before. So we're actually nurturing that grass to grow in and it's beautiful, okay? It stays a lovely color all year, but we can take a section of our field out in the middle where we're not doing any other care drain down a humic tank inside of it with our, with the sludge and the material that we've taken out, all the carbon that's in there, let that soak and dry. And in a couple of rains, there's no more puddling out there. Water is running through. And then all of a sudden the weeds start to just curl up and die. And within a month, Bermuda has then moved into that whole area. And there is a single cultivar of grass growing. And it is the coolest thing that you could possibly see. So for the last few years, we've been doing this in different sites around the grass or the, the field and 
more and more Bermuda is being encouraged to take it over so that eventually we can have just a consistent, basically single cultivar out there across that entire field. But we've watched the um, Spurge uh, disappear. We've watched the Wild Onion disappear. Um, we've watched the Hinbet disappear. We've seen um, Sedges start to go away. Like everything is starting to go away because of how much we've corrected the soil with these massive doses. And I mean massive. It's nothing you could really do on your own um, uh, unless you were planning on flooding out 50 gallons of, of humic concentrate per 10 square feet. You know, you're, you're not gonna do it. Um, so the point of it is, it's a massive correction in a short time and it begins to clear out the soil of those issues. Now remember, this is fill, this is not prepped uh, dirt at all. Um, it was never intended to really have anything growing on it. So weeds are the dominant species out there. They're just everywhere. Um, so as time go has gone on and we do actually fertilize the field, we've seen that happen to a lesser effect because we, we don't get to get out there very often with everything that's happening inside the plant getting production done. We can't be out there on a schedule of every five, six weeks feeding that thing and uh, trying to make it look super pretty. We rely on rain. We don't have any irrigation out there. So it's going to be compacted. It's going to be nasty. But over the last five years, what we have seen is even with the, the applications that we've done, like I said, the weed populations have started to go away. They've completely gone away in the places that we've flooded with the humic sludge. And um, from the time we first moved in there uh, to kill time, sometimes we'd go out and hit golf balls in the field when we were first remodeling it and setting up equipment when, you know, basically myself and Chad and Brad were living uh, in and out of that place 20 hours a day in the plant, uh, just trying to get it set up. We'd go out and hit golf balls to kind of blow off steam. When we were first doing it, when we'd take a divot, it would just be rock and red and you'd see sparks come off the, the head of the club and it was very fun to do, especially when the sun was setting. But now, over time, and with what we've done out there and just the mild applications we've done, if you go hit a golf ball off that ground, you're going to come through an inch, maybe up to two inches of brown soil now, uh, just because of the cycling that we've done and just mild management of that area. So this is just going to be the first overview and I'm going to dive into particular weeds, some species that you might see, you guys can uh, email me or, or put in the comments, uh, you know, what your common weeds are in your area and we can start talking about those. Uh, you know, what do you see in your lawn as a regular thing? What are you uh, dealing with on a regular basis? And what can we do as a program to build in to maybe eliminate them? Maybe not. Maybe we just cut down their populations to such that it's taking considerably less chemical to control. Uh, when you go out and do your pre-emergent application, you control some of those weeds. Now maybe we need to be looking at how can we keep that going through nutrition. Um, that's what I'd really like to get into over the next few videos. So uh, I want you all to stay tuned for that. This is, this is going to be very important as we come into the year. And, and Paul is going to be talking a lot on his channel um, on the DIY about this stuff. I'm, I'm going to be giving him information to show you know, how you can utilize the products that you're, that you're using in your program right now to fix a lot of those pro problems from the homeowner aspect. And then all you guys that are pros that are following me, we're gonna start talking about this and how to build in these nutrients to give you longer lasting weed control through nutrition. So uh, plan on that for Loncology too. We're, I'm, I'll be talking for that for at least a couple hours uh, as one of my um, classes when everybody's down there. So uh, we'll really be digging into this um, pretty deeply. And then uh, the next video, I'm gonna give you guys a book you can take a look at. Uh, there's a couple really good ones out there. Um, I'll put that into some links as we come up and, and start moving along here. So stay tuned. I'm gonna get ready for the snow. It's uh, starting to fall right now. I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, hey, let's just keep talking about lawns in the winter. I'll talk to you guys real soon.